Hey there, folks. My name is Mitch Spano. Thank you for tuning into Apex Hours. Today, we're going to be continuing our discussion on Apex design patterns, and we're going to talk about a pattern that's a favorite one of mine, the strategy pattern. So the strategy pattern allows you to make a game time call. The strategy pattern is a behavioral pattern, so that means that it helps you to control your dynamic application flow, meaning the logic routes that your, that your program takes uh, based on runtime behavior. When we use the strategy pattern, it, it allows us to define a family of algorithms through multiple classes which implement an interface, and then we leave the choice of which implementation to be used uh, to be determined at runtime. So we're making a game time call about which algorithm is going to be most useful for us based on the context or the runtime that we're in when we choose the strategy. When do we want to use the strategy pattern? We want to use the strategy pattern whenever we have a deeply nested switch or conditional if else statement within our application's core logic. So here's an example of a switch statement. And it's pretty easy to read because it's so simple in its nature. But what we're doing is we're taking the record type's developer name. And when it's retail, we'll handle the retail request. When it's wholesale, we'll handle the wholesale request. But the problem is, is that as your application grows and matures, these different contexts that you're going to need to be executing in might become more and more complex. You're going to need to keep writing these multiple separate handlers for every different context that you, that you find yourself in. And each one of these handlers or it's just like another private method within this one particular class. So the, the responsibility of the class actually grows and grows and grows as you handle all of these different contexts. So in order to help our code base stay easier to maintain and easier to read in the long run, we're going to try to introduce the strategy pattern. Here you'll see the class diagram for the strategy pattern. And you'll see that there are a few key concepts here. We'll always start off with some context, and that context depends upon an interface. We call this interface the strategy. Uh, now here we're just saying this interface has a, a, a void method called algorithm. The actual implementation details of the interface don't matter. So it doesn't matter what the argument types are, what the return type are. All that matters is that we have an interface which specifies the method signature for, for an algorithm that we, that we can choose. Then we'll have multiple strategies concrete implementations or concrete strategies that implement the strategy interface. So strategy one, strategy two, whatever we want to. And the context will choose the strategy that it needs at runtime and call its out implementation of the algorithm. So here we have an implementation of the strategy pattern in Apex. This particular implementation is pretty easy. What we're gonna do is based on the accounts record type, Either we're going to get a random fact about dogs or a random fact about cats. So here you can see we have this static final map of record type developer name to an implementation of an interface. So retail is the dog service. Wholesale is the cat service. Okay. Then when we call this static method from a lightning web component called get animal facts for the given record ID, what we're going to do is we're going to get the account from that record ID and get its record type developer name. Then we'll fetch the strategy given that context and use the implementation of that strategy to get the facts that we care about and return those to the caller. So if we scroll down in this class, we'll see that we have the, the uh, animal service interface defined, uh, which will return a fact response when we call get facts. The fact response will have you know, a fact about, and this could be like dog, or this could be cat. And then what is the fact? You know, it could be that, you know, cats have retractable claws or whatever the fact is. Uh, then we have a little uh, selector implementation just to get, a, get us the record type developer name for the record that we're looking on, okay? So, so keep in mind here, what we care about is this interface, right? We're relying on the interface to tell us how we're going to get a fact response. And we don't really care if we're going to get dog responses or if we're going to get cat responses. All that we care about is, hey, you're just going to tell us to get facts and we will get you facts, a fact response back. So um, this, this is the interface that we need to implement. Uh, and you'll see that we have, we have two concrete implementations of it. We have the dog service and the cat service. So here we have the cat service. You'll see that what we're doing is we're making an HTTP callout to a public REST API endpoint. 
and we're going to get the response. And if it's a 200, we'll get the response uh, and we will deserialize that into a, a instance of structured response, which uh, for this API has fact and length. And then what we're going to do is we're going to re return the fact that was in the response. Okay. And here we have our dog service implementation. Now, this is ever so slightly more complicated than the cat service implementation because we're using a different endpoint URL to fetch our facts from, and this one returns a list of facts, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab a random fact out of that list and return that fact. So there's an additional opportunity that we have to make our code even more dynamic by using a dynamic mapping of context to strategy implementation. So here within our example that we shared a couple slides ago for the animal service, we have this hard-coded record type to service mapping. Now this is this works very well to illustrate, and honestly I'd start with this if you only have but a couple of contexts that you're trying to implement. But the problem that happens with this static hard-coded mapping is that as you introduce a new context to strategy pair, somewhere within your code base you're going to need to modify some apex to change or introduce a new key value pair for this mapping. It's not so bad to begin with or if you're starting off with a strategy pattern, but it does leave a little bit to be desired. And there's a mechanism within the Salesforce platform that we can use to help make this even more dynamic and more extensible, and that is custom metadata. So here we have an example where we're using custom metadata to get the context to strategy mapping from rows of metadata that are stored within the system. Here we're getting all of the record type to service mappings, We'll create a key that is the record type developer name that's stored on the custom metadata. And then the custom metadata will also store an Apex class name. And we can use type.forName.new instance, which is reflection within the Apex programming language, to create a new instance of an object from that Apex class name. And then we can take that instance of an object and cast it to the strategy interface that we need to use and map the context to that strategy dynamically at runtime based on these metadata rows. This will enable us the ability to extend our application's functionality without modifying any Apex that we've historically delivered. What we do is we just introduce a new Apex class which implements the interface defined for the strategy. So in this case, it would be the I animal service interface. And then we'll create a new row within custom metadata that would store the mapping of the context, so record type developer name, to the Apex class name for that implementation of the iAnimal service interface. This will allow us to extend our application without modification of it, adhering to the open close principle. And finally, we've put together a small little Lightning Web component that will enable us to test the implementation of the strategy pattern by getting an, uh, a random animal fact based on the account's record type and rendering it to us. So let's switch over to Salesforce and see what this looks like in runtime when we have a retail account and a wholesale account and we fetch live cat facts or dog facts from these REST APIs. Here I am in my scratch org. I've uh, configured and deployed the, the interfaces that we want, the Lightning Web component, uh, and then the cat service and the dog service uh, and enabled the remote site setting so that way we can actually make these callouts. And I've created a couple of accounts. Uh, I've created one called Wholesale. And here when we open up Wholesale, we'll see that we receive a fact about cats. A uh, group of cats is called a clouder. I didn't know that. <laughs> so, uh, and you'll see that this actually is called fresh every single time that the component is loaded. So if we refresh the screen, we should see a different fact about cats. You can check your cat's pulse on the inside of the back thigh where the legs join the body. Normal for cats is 110 to 170 beats per minute. Guess, uh, guess I'm learning a lot about cats today. Okay, so now we've seen that the wholesale accounts are able to fetch dynamic cat facts whenever you view them. But what we should do is we should expect to choose a different strategy when we select a, whole, a retail account. So that means that we want some different implementation of an algorithm to fetch us some animal fact. And in this case, for a retail, we expect a fact about dogs. So dogs engage in rapid eye movement when they sleep and have dreams just like humans do. 
And again, these are live dog facts. So if we refresh the screen, then we'll be able to find new facts about dogs as we just continue to explore this REST API. The oldest known breed of is likely the Saluki. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Originally trained by the Egyptians to help them track game. So you see that we're making a different runtime call. We're making a different, or uh, choosing a different algorithm based on the record type of account that we're viewing. So that is what we mean by the strategy pattern, right? So we want to choose some algorithm that's going to get fetch us some fact about an animal. But we don't know which algorithm we want until runtime. So if we're viewing a retail account, we want to view facts about dogs. If we're viewing a wholesale account, we want to view ca facts about cats. Uh, that's a very simple example. But a question you might have is when should we actually use the strategy pattern? Uh, so we want to use a strategy pattern when you need to choose between one of many algorithms to solve a problem and you don't know exactly which one to use uh, until you're at runtime, okay? Uh, so the strategy pattern is also there to help you uh, break out your custom implementations from the made code path without utilizing multiple large switch statements. So if you have a lot of large switch statements within your code, that might be a clue that you have an opportunity to use the strategy pattern to refactor your code, make it more easy to understand and maintain in the long run. All right, and that is a little bit about the strategy pattern. Once again, folks, my name is Mitch Spano. Uh, we're gonna be continuing to produce more content about Apex design patterns. So we will have more content, more videos coming your way. Thank you for tuning into Apex Hours, and we hope to see you soon.